So this is log one. My name is Carson Isaiah Shen, and I'm the head of the Mech Propulsion Systems Lab, owned and operated by Aegis Mechatronics. This is just a rough recording of notes that will need to be polished and submitted as part of a government audit to fulfill the acquisition request of the Peculiar Robot Contest, or PRC. This is the first year the PRC contract has been offered with strict focus on unique concepts. I guess bipedal mechs are tripping too much on the battlefield. Attached to this file description is a link to more info. It's always tough to be original, so we've been pondering this one for a while. Our main goal will be a large shielded gun arm, heavy armor, heavy weapons, with four legs to support the monstrosity. Crab mechs are not a new concept, but we've got some ideas and time to refine those ideas as we build out the main frame. We hired a private investigator to scope out the team in charge of the PRC. Between the three of the judges, there will need to be extra attention given to originality, consistency, and detailing. As with any new project, time has to be spent researching possible materials and design options. This can take a while and feels like it yields nothing, but the insight gained is valuable to continue working. Admittedly, we have more experience with ballistics than energy weapons, but this time around, I think we're going to go for it and see what happens. While having my morning ration of nutrient paste, it dawned on me how we can begin this mech frame. First, we would need to start on the legs in order to determine the space where weaponry can fit. A classic tank has a rotating turret that moves independent of its base, allowing aiming and movement to point along two separate vectors. We can take the idea of a tank and literally flip it on its head. This allows for a large armored upper shell that armaments can be attached to, and a smaller pelvis that the hip joints connect to, which will be protected by the upper shell. After modifying a standard tank hull for easier maintenance, we realize some ports and hatches that we won't be utilizing need to be sealed off before continuing. It can be quite difficult to find pre-existing parts that fit a particular need, but our procurement manager is always on the lookout for solid parts at a reasonable price. I'd say he does a pretty good job of it too. The pelvis is not as large or armored as the upper shell, so normal fasteners work well for maintenance. There's no need to overcomplicate and use magnetic latches if it's not necessary. Silicon seals are used around each limb connection in order to maintain oil pressure for lubrication of the working parts. Even though we're using a reclaimed tank hull, the location for our pivot is not in a typical spot and we'll unfortunately have to make the whole waste assembly from scratch. The ultrasonic cutter makes quick work of certain materials and was an excellent tool for working on the hull. Funny enough, one of the PRC prizes will be a Z091 ultrasonic cutter from Xeon Market and Ecotech, which is definitely a good reason to participate. The rest of the waste mechanism had to be built up from layers of welds due to the odd shape and size constraints. If we had a large enough lathe to machine out a solid bearing for the waste, we definitely would have. Alternatively, we could have used a truckload of putty, but welds are faster and stronger. We have experience with magnetic latches, and although everyone raves about how high-tech and useful they are, Aegis Mechatronics finds it hard to beat a classic set of fasteners. The way our primary bolt is installed will make it easier to hold and paint later on. With the waste bearing finished, 
We reattached it to the upper shell using more welds from the interior of the armor. A rubberized accordion seal keeps oil from leaking out of components while also applying pressure to the bolted joint. The rubber friction holds the pivot stable and won't allow it to slip out of position once rotated. A small ceramic plate installed into the pelvis helps to keep consistent parallel spacing from the upper shell. After building the main chassis, we can finally work on the four legs. Again, these need to be done first to make sure the weapons we eventually attach do not collide when moving. Combining different geometries such as cylinders and cubes can be difficult, but we're actually making a type of joint that we've used on previous builds so the overall process is not that bad. After spot welding parts to keep them in place, cold fusion photon welding was utilized on the interior of the joint to maximize strength of the combined parts. This was done a total of six times for both the legs and the arms. Even though we don't have the armaments ready to mount, it's helpful to make the joinery ahead of time. The frame material we've picked for the limbs needs to be reinforced, so instant liquid adhesive and sodium alloy powder was chosen for increasing rigidity. The knee joint armor was a tricky problem to solve. We ended up making a guide that could be used for consistent machining of precise slots that the thighs could slot into. The knee would probably take less strain if the calf were attached at a downward angle, but we wanted to keep the mech as low to the ground as possible and opted for a slight upward joint. Instant adhesive was used to spot weld parts in place, but we didn't want to leave anything to chance and once again leveraged cold fusion photon welding. Aegis Mechatronics is a bit old school with construction practices, but even we know to use ball joints on the ankles. As long as the feet have three degrees of freedom for motion, it will always be possible for them to sit stable on the ground. The feet are the biggest innovation on the mech so far. Each leg will have two pointed toes with clamping capability. The eight claws can be used to climb certain difficult terrain or latch onto nearby objects in order to stabilize the mech while firing. Some minor tweaks are needed to make components fit together. It's an easy task, but it takes some time. Assembling one leg is difficult, but after the first one, the rest are easy. With that, we can reassemble everything we've accomplished up to this point. As always, having properly coordinated markings on parts will benefit the process. In our case, assembly is always straightforward with no guesswork. Before I forget, I'm making a note to explain what the name Fiddler means during the next log. 
We'll be open to addressing questions or concerns on behalf of Aegis Mechatronics. Feel free to leave your comments before the final audit is submitted later in the year. All right. I've been rambling for a while now and probably need to catch up on some paperwork. This is Carson again, over and out. New benefactors have joined the cause. This is the end of Log 1.